my question is, why would drag queens want to go in and read to children? We are truly in the latter times. And it says that they will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Folks, we are here today. Where does all this come from? If not spearheaded by the little g God of this world, Satan, and his demonic minions, the little g gods that are out there. This is really nothing new. Israel, when they turned their back on God, they turned to idols. People puff up and say, well, I don't worship idols. But when you don't worship God, the God, Creator God, then your thinking becomes faulty and subject to all this stinking Thinking. Oh, and people want to push science. You press them, there's either only male and female in the beginning, God created male and female. Well, but higher scientists have, no, oh, higher scientists haven't done anything. There's male. And there is female. You look at the number of women that have had children. It's astronomical. You look at the number of biological males that have had children, and it's zero. Well, you know, some woman that thinks she's a man might get pregnant and have a child, therefore men, no. They are still biologically women. They gave them up 10,000 years ago, they get a little bit of DNA, guess what? They're going to identify that person as female. Oh, but they identified as male. Doesn't matter. The genetics speak and the genetics say female. Well, Brother Rick, why do you matter? Why does it matter to you what we do in our bed? You know what? It really doesn't. But you see, the problem is what the LBGTQ whatever has not left it there. They are now cramming it down our throat in every area of society And we weren't seeing much of anything. Thank God for the beer burger. <gasps> Did the pastor say that in church? Yeah. Who are the ones who have stood up the most and said, no, we're not doing this. You want to go to that level? We're going to and Budweiser is still reeling from the effects of their promotion campaign. Now why did it take the beer drinkers to stand up and Christians not? You know, that's a black eye. But they started it. Now people are getting on board and starting to boycott all this other woke bull. But we need 
you stand up and be counted? Oh, but I might lose my job. And we might. But I still say that normal folks outnumber all these others. The only reason they have become as strong as they are is because they're willing to lay down in the floor, kick and scream and whine. And lift their voices loud. And that's always been the problem with normal folk aren't really willing to do that. But all through my life I've known that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. We're in desperate times. And people may tell you, well, the Bible says that this is going to increase until the end, and that is true. But don't we at least want to go down swinging? It's already illegal in many countries to preach the gospel against homosexuality. Imagine that. Now, I'm not commenting on it. Now, God's the one who commented on it. But we can also go to Isaiah 5, verse 20. And it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. to those who call evil good and good evil. We're there. We are to the point where people who speak the truth are maligned because society has moved so far off the They say they're against religion, but their religion is secular humanism. They evaluate themselves or elevate themselves. I had a person once tell me that they were a humanistic Christian. There is no such thing. They're totally different philosophies of life. And you go out and you talk to people and you witness to people and they bring up something points in the Bible and they tell you point blank, my God would never do such and such. And you just have to shake your head and say, no, your God wouldn't. But your God is not the God. Because the Word of God says different. Is there areas and episodes in the Bible that is hard to take? Yes. Yes. Especially if you don't see the big picture from Genesis to Revelations. You don't understand some of the things that God said and told the Israelites to do. Why were whole nations slaughtered? On the surface at face value, it looks like uh, my God wouldn't do such a thing. But God did. And that goes all the way back to when demons came down from heaven. They were angels when they left their first 
states. They were demons and corrupted the earth. Corrupted it so bad that God had to flood the world. And people fly the rainbow flag, the pride flag. They don't have a clue what that flag stands for. They don't know or don't care about the backstory. The backstory is humanity became so wicked and evil. The watchers, angels commanded to watch over humanity left their first estate, came down. Started teaching and leading the people into wickedness and evil. And I read the scripture straight, and it says that the sons of God said it saw the daughters of men. They came down, they had mixed children, the Nephilim, who were so wicked and evil, among many other things. Why did God destroy whole nations? Because they were offsprings even after the flood of the wickedness that was before them. What is the rainbow? It is a symbol that God will never again destroy the world by flood. For the total depravity of man. Oh. So God's not going to destroy the world again? I didn't say that. It's going to go up in flames. Now there's a big debate among Christians now whether this is a total annihilation or just a re- fabrication of the earth. A cleansing. But the Bible says it will be destroyed by fire. That the universe that now is is going to roll up like a scroll and be burned. Fleeing from the presence of God. And then all who die without God are going to face a great There's only one exit from that judgment. And that's into the lake of fire. Not created for mankind. Mankind was never intended to go there. Now the fact that many will is not a surprise to God. But it was intentionally created for Satan and his demonic And remember, if Satan could lead a third of the angels to rebel against God, do you think we have a chance without Him? And everything that's going on right now is because of the wickedness and evilness in men's heart. And the doctrines of demons. Where else could all this wickedness reach back? Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the school with the proud. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Another thing is this movement is called Pride, Pride Month. The first sin 
ever committed, wasn't committed by him. No. It was created by an angelic being. By the anointed cherub. Cherub and seraphim are anointed throne again. Uh, protectors overseeing the worship and holiness of God. Isaiah 14 starting in verse 12. Oh, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Boy, it'd be good if there was a magnifying glass right there. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You shall be brought down to show to the lowest depths of the pit. Then again in Ezekiel, Chapter 27, starting in verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, and diamond. Beryl, onyx, and jasper. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before the kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you and you have become a whore and shall no more and shall be no more forever. Folks, who do you think is behind all that's going on? Satan. Satan was lifted up with pride over his beauty. And he came to the point to where he was no longer satisfied being the anointed cherub, leader of the worship of God, protector of his holiness. And since there was no 
nothing higher to aspire to, he decided he would become like God and be God. And his desire was to usurp the throne of God and set himself upon it. And that desire has not changed. Lucifer, who we know is Satan, the devil, still wants to be worshipped and served. And everything you see around you today only brings him glory. He knows the end of the Bible, although I believe he still thinks he can dodge it. But he's headed for hell, for the lake of fire and brimstone, for all eternity. And he wants to drag you and everyone else with him. If he's going down, he's going to drag as many people with him as possible. But all these cults, all these isms, all this trans pride, gay pride, all it does is glorify evil. And that's not just me standing up and saying this. The world doesn't know that God says that homosexuality is an abomination to them. The Bible goes so far as saying men should not wear women's clothes, nor should women wear men's clothes. There's a lot of other laws in there that we don't keep either. But then we come back and people say, well, that's the Old Testament. We're not under that anymore. Okay, let's go to Romans 1. Start in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. All of this. Go down to verse 26, because I'm running out of time. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, All of this that's going on is a sign of the times. God has given people up to the vile passions of their heart. It's not something to be proud about. It's something to mourn and lament. Lament. Yeah, that word. Lament. It's a curse from God. It's a curse from God. But yet it's hateful when we tell them. If a house is burning and you don't run in, is that love? Well, I don't really want to disturb them. <coughs> They might not agree. Oh, the house is on fire. You either get them out or they're gone. Same way with our faith. Our job isn't to save anybody. Our job is just to transmit the message. 
And then each one will be held accountable for their own decisions and actions. What do we do? Romans 12, verse 11. And do this knowing the time that now is is high time to awake out of sleep. For our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of the darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk profit, properly as in the day. Not reveling and drunkenness. Nor in lewdness and lust. Not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Folks, we're walking in the last days. But then we have been since the first coming of Jesus Christ. But we're seeing more and more the prophecies in this book being fulfilled right before our eyes. And I can't tell you when Jesus is going to come. If I did, you should walk out those doors. Because we don't know. But we as Christians need to live like it is today. A light on a hill cannot be hidden. Let us not put our light under a bushel basket. Let us be roaring fires zealous, fervent for God. In the faith we believe. Let us stand up and say, no more. No more. And march to take back our nation. Brother Brown. We have our altars open. I pray that whatever God has laid on our hearts, we would be faithful. Hymn number 317, only trust in 317.